Hey guys, today's video is going to be me rebuilding this 10 horsepower Briggs. This motor don't really burn a whole lot of oil, but if you look, you can see that all the gaskets are seeping oil. You can see, see there. And I figured why I got it all apart, because it's going to have to be off the motor, obviously. And uh, pretty much have everything out of it anyway. I'll go ahead and put new rings in it. But it does burn a little bit of oil. You can smell it in the exhaust. And sometimes it'll smoke when you start it or after you've been run it for a long time when the oil thins out and you can see a little bit of smoke but uh, it's not real bad so it's a as far as I know this is an aluminum bore engine they don't have no cast iron sleeves so you gotta use chrome rings and aluminum bore and a chrome plated piston but that should be what's in it now anyway from the factory so I'm just going to re-ring it and I'm not going to hone it because I've done a lot of research on it and you're not supposed to hone aluminum bore cylinders uh, except when they've been bored out from the factory that's the only time it's supposed to be honed because the chrome rings are harder than standard cast iron rings and it seats the cylinder instead of seating the rings when you seat it in so the cylinder seats to the rings and they make the rings just a hair bigger to compensate for that but anyway as you can see I got the oil draining out of it and I'm going to go ahead and get the hood off of it and you're ready to pull the motor if you need help on uh, getting all your throttle linkages and everything loose I got a video I made on switching engines, changing engines out it gives you a lot of tips and pointers which I'm going to skip in this video to speed it up so the next thing you'll see is on the workbench getting ready to take it apart alright guys got it on the bench here and got the oil drained out as good as I can I'm going to start taking the carburetor and muffler off here it just comes off like that, it's missing one bolt there arm down here loose just a 5 16 there you get two bolts here go ahead and take the muffler off and get it out of the way this muffler's broke anyway I'll probably put a different one on it okay now I can get to the carburetor easier take these two bolts out if they're real tight you can use a wrench on them You got your linkages here. I'll put in a video at the top if you can click on give you more detail on all the linkages. Cause I'm probably going to skip some of the smaller stuff on there and just get to the actual rebuild. Okay, I'll go ahead and pull the flywheel cover off. You got a bolt down here. You got a little bolt over here to 3 8 7 16 drive. You got two more at the top. We'll look at them. You got two more here. You can see your model type and code number on this. It's 84 model, model 22. Take these two bolts out, and the flywheel cover will come loose. And after you get your four bolts loose, it lifts off. And that's what you don't want to see in one. That's what ruins these motors. No, no air can get past the fins, and they burn up. Okay, now I'm go ahead and take the coil loose. And hook your spark plug wire and trace your kill wire off here. If it's a newer model, it'll have a connector one here. You get your two quarter inch bolts here. Get these loose. This really needs a new coil. You can see the wire's in bad shape here, but I'm gonna tape that up before I put it back in there. Should be alright for a while. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start taking the head off. You get your bolts here. You want to take them off in a crisscross pattern. Take the pressure off evenly. That one was loose there. I think the head gasket's leaking too. You can see like carbon leaking out of the bottom. Now I'll take all these out off, off camera and get right back to you taking the head off here. Okay, I got all the bolts loose. And 
And you can see there's quite a bit of carbon build up. Not as bad as I thought it would be, but I've seen a lot worse than this. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and the head gasket probably be reused again. Usually when they stay in one piece, you can reuse them, but I got a new one for it anyway. And uh, I'm going to take the starter and the crankcase cover off here to get the rest of it apart here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and take the starter off. you got two half-inch bolts here. You can leave it warm. I'm just going to take it off to get it out of the way, but you don't absolutely have to. This is the starter I uh, uh, reseated the brushes in on another video I'll put in up here if you're interested in that. And you get this top bolt loose here and the starter just comes off like that. Alright, same deal as the head bolts. You want to take these off in a crisscross pattern here. I'm going to go ahead and get these off off camera. Alright, I got all the bolts out of here. Easiest way to do this is take a rubber mallet. Yeah, it's not as dirty as I thought it would be. I thought there was usually a lot more sludge in it than that. Here's the oil slinger, it fell out. I'm gonna go ahead and get the oil cleaned up. Take this shield loose up here and get everything cleaned up a little bit more and we'll get right back to you. Okay guys, I got the gasket surface here cleaned up pretty good. I got the oil pan soaking in the degreaser to get it cleaned up real good. So I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do all the cleaning off camera. I don't wanna bore you all with that. And like your head here, just use a wire brush like this. It's best to have a surfacing plate where you can resurface this or do it on the milling machine, but uh, since this motor ain't in too bad a shape, it shouldn't be that bad that it needs done. I don't have no way of doing it right now anyway. And the same for your top of your cylinder. You wanna clean it up. And you wanna take a wire brush to your top of your valves, all this and the top of the piston, but get the piston all the way up. That way you don't have to worry about uh, getting the wire brush down inside here. All right, guys, you see I got it cleaned up about as good as it's going to get. It don't have to be perfect. You see there's still a little bit of carbon there, but it's not that big of a deal, to be honest about it. I got this cleaned up as good as I can. It's not as bad as it looked. Then took a wire brush to this on the drill. And you can see you get that fill of the dirt. So anytime you do that, you want to take the piston out, at least to clean it if you're not putting new rings in it. Same way with the valves. I'll be reseating the valves. Okay, I got the timing marks lined up. You can see here, the camshaft will slide right out. Now make note of your valve tappets. The one in the front here is your exhaust. You want to put the same one back in the same slot because one of them could be worn a little bit different. It'll mess up your valve clearance. The next thing I'm going to do is take the rod loose. You see you got a bolt here and another bolt on top that you can't really see. You got this little locking tab that's bent over over top of the bolt head. You want to bend that out so you'll be able to get to the bolt. All that does is keep the bolt from working loose. Okay, on these tabs to bend them out, you just got to get a screwdriver underneath of them, pound them out like that, and then you're ready to take the bolts loose. These are half inch drive. They're pretty tight, and that always wants to, the ratchet always wants to slip off because there's so much oil on everything. And once you get them broke loose, you usually can take them out with a hand. And pay attention to your bolts, because I don't think on these older engines, but a lot of the new ones, you have one bolt longer than the other one. You just have to pay attention to how it came out, and those are torque different too. I think these are both the same length, it looks like it. And once you get it loose, you can usually kind of use the bolts as leverage to pry the cap off. You want to put the, the cap on, it goes back on one way. You see there's a notch cut on this side and there's not on this side. You want to inspect this for wear. And score marks. This engine didn't have no noise at all. So it's probably still good. You can see it's in real good shape. Uh, you have a few light marks like that. It ain't nothing to worry about. General rule of thumb on the, anything with a bearing like this, you can, if you can't feel the marks with your fingernail, it's usually good to go. Same with the cylinder. The piston. So this is this rod will still be good. I'll go ahead and get it loose from this and turn the crankshaft to get it out of the way. You want to push on it upwards. 
and push the piston right out of the cylinder. You gotta push up on the rod until you get the piston out. A lot of times there's a groove around here that hangs up. That's what they're doing this. They make a tool to clean this up with, but I don't have one, so I'm gonna have to clean it up by hand. Just make sure you keep don't get into the actual cylinder and you'll mess it up. Okay, I got to start after I had to work with it a little bit. You just push up on it like that until the rings get past that piece around there. You want to inspect your piston for any score marks or anything. Or if your motor is through a rod and you're putting it back together, a lot of times the bottom of the skirt will break off the piston. You also want to inspect the crank, the crank journal in there to make sure it's in good shape, no score marks. And if you're replacing the rod and everything, you want to use a micrometer on there to mic it to see what your clearance is. You can see the cylinder ain't in too bad a shape. So I'm just going to put the new rings in it without hunting since this is aluminum bore. If I had the sleeve in it, the cast iron sleeve, I would hone it. Like I said, the ring should seat this back in. I guess we'll go ahead and get the valves out. And take the valve cover off here on the side. You got two 5 16 screws here to hold this on. Take them out. You should be able to get a screwdriver underneath here and pry it off like this. Don't worry about the gasket. You'll be replacing that anyway. You see it always tears. This is basically like a PCV, PCV valve on a vehicle. It works, does the same thing. It gets to blow by out of the crankcase and everything. And now you can get to the valves. You look down there, you'll see a little bit of a crack here. I'm not too concerned about it because it's not really in a critical spot. I figure that's from where that grass was in there and the engine overheated at some point and caused that. Okay, now I'm going to get the valves out. These are the easy type. I'll show you what I'm talking about uh, once I get it out. A lot of your bigger engines will have the clips in it like a vehicle does. And it makes it real hard to work with on these since everything's so small anyway. You want to get your valve spring compressor. You have to use this type. It's about the only type that will work on a flathead. Uh, you want to get it on there like that. You want to catch the spring as far up as you can and compress it like this. And also, don't get your springs mixed up because they're usually different. Then you can grab a hold of your valve. You should be able to slide it like that and you'll get it. Now, let me show you what I just did and the way you understand easier. You get this notch in the valve, and it goes through here, and hooks on that. You can see right there, that's how it works. That's how both of these are, so I'm going to go ahead and do these off camera. This is the intake valve here. So you don't want to get your springs mixed up, because I'm pretty sure they're different. Usually the exhaust spring is a little bit stronger. And this is your retainer clip here. And this is what I was talking about. You might be able to see it better now. Get in there like that. So 